Hi and welcome to the Demalak Cookery channel or should I say welcome back to the Demalak Cookery channel because I haven't done a video for a few weeks. I've been involved in a project in the garden. I'm going to do a video on that in the next couple of weeks just to show you guys what I've been up to. In today's video I want to show you how to make homemade donuts. I was in the supermarket the other day there's a stand from a global manufacturer of donuts just really didn't look that appetizing to me. More emphasis seemed to be on the icing that was coating the donut rather than the donut itself. It is so easy and to make donuts at home and they are 10 times better than anything you will buy in the supermarket, I can guarantee it. As usual, a full list of ingredients will be given at the end of the video. So let's crack on and have a look at those ingredients, what we're going to need for today. So what we need for today's donut recipe is 500 grams of bread flour or strong white flour, 50 grams of standard granulated sugar, 350 milliliters of liquid. Now this is made up of 175 milliliters of uh, hot water and 175 milliliters of cool milk. It's still fairly warm to the touch. Two seven gram sachets of fast action dried yeast. We're going to have 50 grams of butter. This is going to be placed into the warm liquid in order to soften before it goes into the uh, food mixer. And again, this is just a guide with the liquid. We may need more, we may need less. Uh, we'll just have to see how we go. We want one medium sized free range egg, which has been beaten, one teaspoon of salt, and two 500 milligram vitamin C tablets. These are the tubal ones, which means that they can be crushed. I'm going to place those into the pestle mortar and crush those down into a powder before it goes into the mix. I'm going to explain a little bit about, in a little bit more detail about why we need the uh, vitamin C tablets. I'm going to do that next. We're going to need a food mixer with a dough hook in order to mix the dough. So once I've explained about the vitamin C tablets, we're going to put all of the dry ingredients into the bowl and mix them through thoroughly as, as we normally do. And then we're going to add the liquid part. We're going to place this on a medium speed and with a dough hook and we're going to mix up then for about 10 to 15 minutes just to get the, the dough nice and, and um, pliable and, and, and get some elasticity into that dough. So what I wanted to do here is just explain a little bit about why we are using two 500 milligram vitamin C tablets in this recipe. So one of the problems we have when we're using a, things like wheat flour that contains a lot of starch, especially bread flour, is when the starch gets heated through the baking process, it changes its structure. And then as it cools, it, the structure changes again. And it causes a thing called starch retrogradation, which is basically an aging process. Now with something like bread, we heat the bread up and cool it down. This starch retrogradation will mean that the bread will start to go stale after the first day and, and homemade bread possibly will last two days before it goes stale at the very most. With something like donuts, when we're placing it into very hot oil, and then we're cooling it down, it heats up rapidly, it cools down rapidly, and that actually accelerates the uh, aging process, which means that instead of lasting two days, like a loaf of bread, donuts, you'd be lucky if they last six or seven hours before they start to go stale. So we need to try and slow down that aging process. Number of ways we can do that. One is once the donuts are cool, place them in an airtight container, that will extend the, uh, the freshness or the shelf life of the product. The other one, and unfortunately a lot of commercial bakeries do it, is we can use lots of, of salt. Salt will, will slow down the aging process, but as we all know, salt is killing a generation. And if you know anything about Damalak, you'll know that we're on a mission to reduce the amount of salt in people's diets as much as possible. So we're not going to use salt to slow down the aging process. What we can use though, is a thing called ascorbic acid or vitamin C. So we can get ascorbic acid over the counter uh, in most supermarkets and in chemists through vitamin C tablets. And that's why we're using the 500 milligram vitamin C tablets today. The only thing you need to be aware of is that you get what's called the chewable tablets. And that basically just means that they're a chalk base so you can grind them down in the pestle and mortar. And the second thing is try, well, 
avoid the flavoured uh, tablets or the ones that are flavoured with things like orange or, or citrus flavours. Um, you can get those, I've managed to find them, they are difficult to find. If you're struggling to try and find an unflavoured vitamin C chewable tablet, then you can get the powder. So you can get the vitamin C powder, most chemists, health food shops, and if you're using the powder, then use half a teaspoon of powder. Okay, so the dough is now ready uh, to take on its first um, proofing. So this has been mixing in the bowl for about 12 to 15 minutes in order to get a lot of elasticity into the dough, which is great. It's a very hydrated dough uh, for doughnuts, which means that there's a lot of fluid in there. Um, I've got about 30 mils left. You never know on the day. As I said before, it's just a guide. We want a fairly tacky dough for this. Um, we don't obviously over tacky, but we want a fairly tacky dough. You never know on the day how much fluid you're going to need. It could all depend on, on the different types of flour that you use, the humidity within the kitchen. That's why I never put the fluid in first and then add the flour mix to it, because you just never know. So this is now going to go into an oiled, lightly oiled um, bowl going to cover that with cling film and then place it into a warm area of the kitchen in order for the dough to double in size. So the doughnut dough has been left for about an hour, well it's been left for a little bit longer than that to tell you the truth, to double in size and again it's slightly more than doubled in size. The next thing we want to do is to roll this out now to about a centimetre or roughly about half an inch thickness, no less than that. Otherwise you'll end up with flying saucer or frisbee shaped donuts. So about a centimetre or half an inch in thickness and then we'll start to cut the donuts out. Right, so we've rolled this out to about a centimetre thickness. 
I'm going to do two shapes of dough nut here. One is the what we call in the UK the traditional style, which is a solid shaped donut and I'm also going to do the American style which is the donut with the hole in the center. So I'm just using a standard pastry cutter, get as close to the edge as possible and just cut those shapes out. Just be careful of the work surface. Okay, so the actual dough shapes now are going to go onto a floured tray, spaced apart so they're not touching each other. And these will then be, you've got two choices really with this now. You can either place them with a tea towel over the top in a warm area to double in size, about 40 minutes uh, that will take. Or what I'm going to do with these is to add some more flavor into the actual dough itself is I'm going to be placing these with a tea clean tea towel over the top in the fridge for about three to four hours to do a slow rise. That just creates a lot more flavor uh, within the actual dough itself. So you've got two choices really of what you want to do. So that's our, what we class as more of a traditional shaped donut in the UK. So again, what I said I'll be doing is I'll be placing a tea towel over the top, place them into the fridge for about three hours to do a, a slow rise. So I'll just show you how to do the, the American style uh, donut shape with a hole in the center, or how, how I do it. So the, this is just the scraps. So once we've cut out the main shapes, bring all the other dough together and just roll it out. You probably only get one chance at doing that. You don't want to continually be uh, putting it together and re-rolling it. So again, about a centimetre in thickness. Cut the standard, or the, I call it a traditional UK shape of donut out. Take your um, apple corer into the centre. Cut the center out and then just open it up slightly with your fingers and that's it. That's the American, what I class as the American style um, donut. Yeah, and place that onto a floured baking tray, tea towel, clean tea towel over the top and then either place it into a warm part of the um, kitchen for about 40 minutes to double in size or as I'm doing place it into the fridge for about three hours uh, just get more flavor into the dough there right we'll come back once that's done and I'll show you the next process so the donuts have now been uh, rising for a second time I've done them in the fridge for three hours you can do them however you want either in the fridge or in a warm place in the kitchen which will take about 40 minutes Next thing we need to do is we've got the oil now at 170 degrees centigrade and I'm just going to place a couple of the donuts in carefully. Okay now we want to cook the donuts for three minutes on either side but we'll do it in one minute increments. So one minute on one side, turn them over, cook for a minute, turn them back, cook for a minute until you've cooked them for three minutes on either side. So keep turning them over every minute until they're cooked. What you'll find is after about a minute the oil will stop bubbling, then you turn them over and the oil will start bubbling again. So this donut here is one of the ones where we use the leftovers, the pieces, and we brought them together again. So you can see how uneven it is at the top. It'll still taste the same. It just doesn't look the same as the other one, which has like a perfect, perfectly smooth finish on the top. So these donuts now get placed onto a wire rack to cool. If you don't place them onto a wire rack, 
because they're very hot underneath you place them onto a flat surface they'll start to sweat underneath it won't be very appetizing okay so these are now cooked same principle as before three minutes on either side uh, turning them every minute so what I'm going to do with these while well, they're quite warm and with the oil on the outside I'm going to dip these in some caster sugar which I've just simply placed onto a plate that will just help the caster sugar to stick to the donut right so let me show you what I've been doing here so these are the finished um, donuts the cooked the ones with the caster sugar on top when they come out of the oil let them cool down slightly and then straight onto a dish so this is the dish with some with some caster sugar on top and just dip the tops in there I've then used a skewer just to make a hole in the side and then got some chocolate spread and um, just piped some chocolate spread into the sides or into the center and then dip them back into the um, back into the sugar just to seal over the end what I'm going to do with the American style um, donuts is to just put some icing over the top So you can use just icing sugar and water without the food colouring in. So when you're making, making icing for the top of donuts like this, you need about six tablespoons of icing sugar to one tablespoon of water. You need very little water. So that's it, homemade donuts with the addition of the ascorbic acid and keeping them in an airtight container, they'll stay fresher for longer, absolutely delicious and a lot cheaper than the prices in the supermarket. Please subscribe to the channel and as usual, if you've enjoyed the video, hit the like button. Thanks for watching.